How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel showing off Afro Samurai Volumes 1 and 2 by Takashi Okazaki. These books were published by Titan Manga and will retail for about $20 US. Each one's broken up into five chapters about a piece, I believe, and that's relatively the size of a comic issue, if not a little shorter, but overall very short for a manga, especially a complete manga. And before we get started, I'm not going to spoil anything with my words, but I will be flipping through the book. The plot in this story is not particularly dense or complex, but I may be just skirting around the edges of spoilers at times, so be on a lookout for that. Read it first, come back after, we can talk about it. So, I recently read this front to back in only a couple days. It's pretty short, uh, pretty action-packed. I'll leave that one over there for now as I flip through here. So, written and illustrated by Takashi Okazaki, and I believe this was made for American audiences after the reception of the uh, movie, and I think show, or show into a movie, I believe. Um, I actually haven't seen much of that. Some stuff here and there, but just the comic for now is my experience with Afro Samurai. Um, I do know the soundtrack, and I hear that a bit when I read it, but as you can see here, not a typical manga style, in my opinion. A little bit rougher, a lot more shades going on than just a harsh white and black. There's a lot more grays. And he definitely has a way of shadowing with a kind of horizontal, sketchy... You can see it in almost every panel. Just like there. The lines on the hand. He pretty much just shades with these really thin, quick lines. And just groups them densely to make shadows. You can see it especially here. So, very unique art style in my opinion, although at a first glance I could see how you'd think it's just a regular manga art style, but that is changed a lot with the addition of red in the story, which is used super effectively. It does look very digital and kind of out of the ordinary, out of kind of um, the typical visual aesthetic of a manga, but I think it works really well. It's drawn to be like very realistic blood, not even drawn, I should say. It's, it's made to look very realistic uh, for blood in comparison to the not super realistic art style, but very stylized art style with the headband wrapping all around. And now that we're kind of into the beginning of the story, I wouldn't say this is a spoiler, this is page like three. Um, the story is essentially about our main character, Afro, here, who his father dies. Uh, his father's the number one headband wearer and is killed by the number two headband who takes it, becomes number one. Um, in this world, it is kind of a samurai era aesthetic, but there is guns and some higher technology, like mechanical limbs and things like that, so a very fantasy world. Um, there is more developed about the world later that I think is very interesting. Not elaborated on a ton, but it's kind of cool ideas shown throughout. And uh, it is our character growing up to be an absolute badass samurai. And we start off with not a lot of background to his character or anything. We get a lot of that actually in Volume 2. The first five books or chapters or issues, whatever you want to call them, uh, are pretty much just straight action. We know his purpose is to kill the number one headband wearer and get... Not even really... He doesn't care about the power that it brings. It apparently brings you the power of a god. But he's not in it for the power. He's in it for revenge. It is a over-the-top... Beautifully illustrated revenge story with swords and guns and bows and arrows and it's just pretty much everything you want in a kind of samurai story mixed with a little higher technology and it's just so hyper violent and brutal especially with the use of the red just kind of puts it over the top in terms of the visual see there's some higher technology there with these kind of like electric binocular thing I assume he's yeah you can even hear it kind of making the, the vui sound there as it's going in and out. Um, and there's just a weird character designs on these, this villain here. Um, I really enjoyed this story. I really, there's really not much more to say without spoiling in terms of the, the narrative itself. It's a revenge story. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of um, discovering of our main character's background and inspirations and hesitations. But mainly it is just over-the-top action. Um, with just some really stylized fight scenes that are awesome to look at. 
Uh, the one thing that uh, this isn't really a spoiler, I won't say, but if you're worried about them, maybe skip like 10 seconds. Our main character is kind of a bad guy. He will kill innocent people to get his revenge, and he does so willingly. Um, kills people that he is friends with, that are complete strangers, uh, anyone that gets in his way or that could help him to fulfill his goals. I'm going to skip forward to the middle of Volume 2 here to a very interesting character with the uh, kind of teddy bear head. He's on the main cover of Volume 2 as well. Uh, this fight scene was really a standout one for me. It has emotional stakes that are built up with, in, with the use of flashbacks, and it is also one of the longer fight scenes. I would say it's almost the main fight scene of the story. It's not like the final boss type character, that antagonist, but it is really just the most built up and kind of showy fight scene in the in the book. A lot of really great uses of motion. I will say there were some parts where I kind of lost the thread with kind of like small gestures they would make, or if they pull out a knife, very small knife, or maybe they throw something I missed kind of and had to go back. So it's not the absolute cleanest uh, fighting art that I've seen, but it really is very, very kinetic and consistent. He always, he's very consistent with his character drawings, which is usually never a problem in manga. Consistency in terms of anatomy and things like that is very well done for all manga artists that I've seen. Not all, but most. The clogs on there. I really don't have a ton to say about this other than this is some Darth Vader shit. Uh, I don't have much more to say on this other than it was badass. It was a really fun read. There's definitely some emotional themes and things, and there's a little bit deeper of a story. It's not really about that, though. If you're looking for, like, a deep, deep cut, something that'll change your life or something to move you, I just don't think this is that story, but it is just, like, it's an action flick. It's a popcorn flick. Um, it really goes down like, like if you were just to go see a Michael Bay movie, but with a little bit more... Uh, style rather than just being bland as hell. Um, it is pretty much all here for the action. There's also some back matter here in these stories. has translation notes for everything, um, some supplement from the original Afro Samurai before he made the show. It was kind of a more indie thing. You can see his style kind of evolved a lot from there. But uh, sorry if I'm shaking in this video, I just noticed it's freezing cold down here. But um, yeah, it's really fun to see that back matter like that. I really, once again, don't have a ton to say. I will just say I recommend these two volumes. I'm not sure why they didn't put a one here. They did put a two here. But, yeah, highly recommend this stuff. It's great. Um, it's just not... If you're a certain kind of reader that's not really here for... Um, like, if you're not into superheroics and hyper-violence and action, maybe you want to stay away from this. If you're trying to go for, like, a really deep emotional story, something like Pun Pun, this is not that... This is just action. So I really enjoyed it, but it, it takes a certain mood to enjoy something like this. It's very different from uh, the Zoe Thorogood book I recently showed off. Uh, it's Lonely at the Center of the Earth. Very different book from that, but still a very high quality. So let me know if there's any other manga like this I should read. I do enjoy a good fight manga. Not all the time. I'm not going to read fight manga back to back for the next couple months, but I do enjoy a good, uh, a good fight series. Like Ghost Cage, I showed on the channel as well. It was a really good fight, manga style, although it wasn't an American comic. But uh, I'm rambling now, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Peace.